I like to make songs start to finish. All that control, it's the coolest thing in the world. And that's why I got started in the first place. I wanted to go to this imaginary place and create whatever I, I felt like creating. Cause when the moon... My name is Jason, my friends call me Cheese. I'm an engineer, musician, producer. Done a lot of stuff with NBA Youngboy. Did Kendrick's verse for Goosebumps in this room. FL Studio is such an integral part of us making music. And 90% of the work is just prep, and then 10% is fun. I wanted to show you some live tracking in FL Studio today to kind of just give more power in the creative's hands. So now I want to take you through the template I created for FL Studio. I've tried to make it as easy as possible to just open and go. You don't need to twist a lot of knobs and, and move a lot of faders to make it work. You can see we have color-coded tracks laid out. The red tracks are your buses for the individual tracks before it, right? On the buses, we have compressors, EQs, compressors, EQs, limiter, multiband compression, EQ. Why, Cheese? Why do you have 10 plugins on one channel? Because that's how I like to do things. I like to hit them at very small increments along the way. All your mixing and sound comes from any of the red faders. Once you get past that section, though, you come into this master fader section, right? I wanted to make sure that you guys had control over sections of the music, right? So we have your vocal, we have drums, if you stemmed out a beat, I mean, we have an all music section. So you have more control over your music, where it can go sonically. And once you learn the flow for how they're routed, everything follows suit. In FL Studio, it's this little send right at the bottom for every track. If you look at the routing for the lead vocal, that's going to the vocal bus. From the vocal bus, it's going to the all vocal pre-master, and you can see the effects being routed. I have a reverb and a delay. So if I wanted to add a little bit more reverb, you just twist this up. If I wanted to add a little bit of delay, just twist this up. And you can see those plugins on those channels. That's the template laid out. So let's show you how that sounds. Share some vocals for a session I did back in 2022. For that processing, I have the lead vocal being sent to the bus and effects. But now what if I got rid of the dry vocal? If I take off the reverb and just solo the drive, you have full control over all of the pieces in the song. Let me show you a little bit about the reverb throw and a delay throw, which are in here at the bottom. I like to use these on the fly while I'm recording. It makes the stuff sound cooler and gives it a little bit of attitude. When you listen to this part, that now nah, I want that to tail out a little, a little bit longer without uh, affecting all the vocals, right? If we solo that, you'll hear it's just a completely wet vocal, just reverb with the dry vocal. Or... So I like to throw those in parts that need energy within the music. You never want a dull moment. The little bit of delay, a little bit of a reverb on the fly without having to automate parts to different reverbs is a huge tool for me. And we do it just like that. Really just want to make it easy for all of my buddies to literally just push record and maintain the integrity of what we started with, even though they might mix differently than that. No, just picking. Sony sounds better. I'll leave all the space. So we're going to record some acoustic guitar. There's two techniques I want to show you guys. They're straight ahead, just right in front of the guitar and the 12th fret. You can keep level with the guitar and go straight ahead. You can pull back, but anywhere in front of the 12th fret and sound hole, it's gonna work all the time. Another technique that I use a lot is when you turn the diaphragm in at an angle in front of either the 12th or the 7th, depending on how it's being played, and kind of hitting this spot on the acoustic. So now we're gonna start recording some music at its most simple form. It's an acoustic guitar getting recorded into the program, right? I added a few steps before that. Instead of taking the output from the guitar, I threw a microphone on it. We are using a U47, and that microphone is going into this Neve preamp. 
From there, I'm hitting a compressor to kind of help with the attacks, the dips, level the sound out, make it more full. But inside, if I took the direct, I would probably add something for a little saturation and still throw a compressor on there to handle those peaks and valleys to make it smooth. So now let's listen to what that sounds like. So we got some acoustic guitar. Now to vocals, one of my favorite things. This is a U67. I like to keep about four finger length from the mouth on the pop filter. So let's go cut some vocals. Cause when the Vibes, yeah, the ending is super strong. No, not feel yeah, good. No, but we're now out of I'm time. ready to record. Can't let's do, do a, let's do a new song. So we recorded a little bit of guitar, a little bit of vocals, using the template for FL Studio. It's just important to have a flow that works for you, that's routed right, that's easy to use to give you more options, to have more control over the music. Hopefully it inspires a few people to push further in their creative process. It's like that's at the core what inspired all of us was how it made us feel because of how it sounded. Yeah.